What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. And it's going to be a big week here for multiple different things here. Number one, the Democrats are trying to close out a massive, massive deal here worth hundreds of billions of dollars. That's if they can get Senator Kirsten Sinema to sign on. We'll hear from Senator Joe Manchin here in just a moment. Also, next we have, we will talk about one state sending out stimulus checks here now today. Today. Here is Senator Joe Manchin. Here he is, Hi. Senator Joe Manchin. Hi. <laughs> Maybe you would be a better senator. What do you think? <laughs> All right, buddy. Go run for Senate. Okay. All right, bye. Okay, here's the actual Senator Joe Manchin and why he changed his mind yet again. Here we go. And joining me now is Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Senator Manchin, welcome back to Meet the Press. Always good to be with you, Chuck. All right, so let me just start with this. Two weeks ago, you said you were adamant you needed to see the July inflation numbers before you were ready to talk about this uh, bigger budget bill with the Democrats called reconciliation. And then abruptly, you didn't need to see those inflation numbers. What changed your mind? It wasn't abruptly, Chuck. We've been working and negotiating off and on very quietly because I didn't know if it ever come to fruition. I didn't want to go through the drama that eight months ago that we went through for so long thinking we negotiated, got close, and then it fell apart and this and that. Never could get there on the Build Back Better. It just was too much, and I never could get there. On this one here, we started in April and kept working and working and working and back and forth. And all of a sudden, inflation went from 6 to 8.1 to 9.1. And I said, hey, Chuck, listen, we better wait and let's see what's coming in July. Numbers come in in August before we do anything more. And that was a point of where we had been talking and negotiating. And that's when Chuck got upset with me. And I understand that. And he says, oh, here we go again and everything. I said, no, Chuck. I said, I'm just being very cautious. I'm not going to be responsible for inflaming the uh, inflation rates. I'm just not going to do it. So then we got a hot weekend. We all cooled off a little right. bit and talked on Monday. And I said, Chuck, I've never walked away. We're still working on it. And he says, well, okay, let's do it. And I said, well, let's start talking. So to Chuck's credit, our staffs kept talking. We didn't know if we were going to get there or not. Yeah. But the f bottom line was, is we reduced it and scrubbed it clear down to 739. Nothing inflammatory in that piece of legislation. The initial uh, criticism of this bill from Republicans is, uh, in some ways, to some people, a predictable response, which is simply this. You should not increase any taxes during a time of recession. Why is now the right time to hit certain businesses with a tax hike? First of all, Chuck, I agree with my Republican friends. We should not increase taxes, and we did not increase taxes, Chuck. That's what we scrubbed out from that Thursday when we shut down until we started talking again on Monday. The only thing we have done is basically say that every corporation of a billion dollars of value or greater in America should pay at least 15 percent a minimum corporate tax. Many people in West Virginia don't, couldn't believe that corporations aren't paying anything, and some of the largest in the country. And with that being said, the rate was at 35% in 2017 when my Republican friends took it to 21. We thought it should stop at 25. It went to 21, a 14% savings. You would at least think that they would be paying at least 15%. Most businesses and all corporations that I know of pay 21%. So that's not a tax increase. It's closing a loophole. Well, I understand that, but one person's loophole is another person whose tax bill increased. And you know, the folks over at the National Association of Manufacturers, and look, they're not going to like any, anything that increases their tax bill. I understand that. Sure. But here's their main argument. They say, by doing this, you threaten to stifle the very innovation this bill is supposed to spur, because if you create that tax penalty and you don't get the credit for investment, then all of a sudden you don't see that. They'll make the decision not to invest. Do you buy that argument? I don't, because I'll tell you why. The last two years have been massive record profits, massive record profits. And with that being said, it's been the lowest investment of capital expenditure that we've ever had. 
So it's not the taxes that's driving this. What's driving people sitting on their money right now is a lack of confidence that we can't get our act together in Congress or government. And they don't have a confidence there. So what we have done is we have total permitting reform. That's mm -hmm. the thing everyone has told me. When I've asked them, point blank, they said, if you can just take the leashes off, take the chains yeah. off of us, let us go and do it. So we're going to basically reform our permitting so we're able to get these projects completed that trust, are needed now. I know that was the promise you got. And it's one of those where um, you were promised a bill later. You, get, you, you support reconciliation now. You're going to get permitting reform later. Why did you not insist on permitting reform first before you gave, gave them your vote for reconciliation? We would have done permitting reform in this bill, but basically because of the birdbath and because of reconciliation being around finances, it did not fit. Mm -hmm. So with that, we have an agreement from Speaker Pelosi to Majority Leader Schumer to President Biden. We all have made an agreement on this. And you know what? If someone doesn't fulfill, if I don't fulfill my yeah. commitment promise that I will vote and support this bill with all my heart, there's consequences, and there's consequences on both sides. So I have all the trust and faith that this right. will be accomplished. We'll get this done, Speaker, and if not, we both are going to face some consequences. Speaker Pelosi and Chuck Schumer can keep their word, and the bill still wouldn't could, and it's possible the bill still doesn't pass. So what are the consequences if you don't get your permitting reform because they don't have the votes? Well, I, I, as I've said before, there's there's other avenues and vehicles that we can use. And I've been committed, I've been promised, and I do believe and I trust. And if any of us don't keep our promises, mm -hmm. then there are consequences to pay for this. And I don't think that's going to happen at all, Chuck. There's too much at stake yeah. here. This is the greatest investment we've ever had in energy security. Energy security and also investment in the innovation and technology that we need for the fuels of the future. This is a, this is an all-American bill, red, all right. white, and blue all the way through. Now, the name of this bill, some would argue, is a bit misleading, the Inflation Reduction Act. Can you explain where in this bill inflation will be reduced for, for folks in the next six months? Well, first of all, we got the highest gas prices right now. Inflation is killing it's, it's hurting everyone in West Virginia right now, and it's hurting all working people across America. And if you want to get the gasoline prices down, you've got to produce your way out of it. And we've got to bring more manufacturing to back to America. And let me tell you what the bill does. It gives us a strong fossil energy that's going to produce the cleanest forms of fossil energy in the world. That's carbon reduction when you're replacing the dirtiest oil right now that's going into the, into the climate and atmosphere. That's something we can do. You producing in America, we become energy independent. You're going to reduce because of supply. Next of all, we pay $300 billion down on debt. Mm -hmm. $300 billion, the first time in 25 years, Chuck, that we've ever done this. Next of all, we're reducing $288 billion, billion in drug prices because of what we're doing. This is a bill that basically does everything. And some, someone says it's not going to reduce inflation. My goodness, we've never done anything like it. We didn't raise taxes. Yeah. We've paid down debt. We've done everything, and we've accelerated our permitting processing so we can get things I, on look, the market I understand it doesn't the add, market quicker. I understand it doesn't add to inflation, but here's what the folks at Penn Wharton said. It said the impact on inflation is statistically indistinguishable from zero. Isn't calling it the Inflation Reduction Act uh, sort of politically cynical and a bit misleading? Not at all. If you're producing more and have more demand, more supply, and that supply drives, basically, uh, satisfies demand. And then the prices come down because there's more people shopping for the products. That's all. That's capitalism. Yeah. That's who we are. We haven't done that. If we're able to bring things to market quicker, they're not looking at the long, t at the long game at all. But, you know, yeah. Chuck, you talk to different economists, they all have a different opinion. They told me the 17 uh, po uh, laureate, right. uh, Nobel laureates were saying that it was going to be transition, transition. And you know what? It wasn't transitory. It was permanent. We have a serious problem right. in inflation, and we've got to defeat it. Uh, are you convinced that Senator Sinema is going to support this bill? Um, she, or if she ends up changing some parts of the tax structure because Republic, she votes with Republicans, would that impact your support of this reconciliation package? L let me say that Kirsten Sinema is a friend of mine, and we work very close together. She has a tremendous, tremendous uh, input in this piece of legislation. This is things that everyone has worked on over the last eight months or more. And she basically insisted that, that, uh, that no tax increases. Mm -hmm. We've done that. 
Uh, she was very, very adamant about that, and I support and I agree with her. She was also very instrumental in making sure that we had drug prices that Medicare could compete on certain drugs to bring it down so that there right. wouldn't be an impact on individuals on Medicare across. She's done all this, so she has a, a tremendous amount of input in this piece of legislation, and I would like to think she would be favorable towards it, yeah. but I respect her decision. She'll make her own decision based on the contents. Senator Manchin, what's your case She's for Democrats? She's a good friend of mine. I, I respect her. What's your case for Democrats to keep control of the House and Senate this election year? I don't know. I just, if you look back through history, it makes it very difficult, especially in most uh, toxic times we've ever seen. So it's up in the air right now. Whether no, do the, you, uh, House, right, it looks like the House. Would you say, like, do you hope Democrats keep control of the House and Senate? I think people are sick and tired of politics, Chuck. I really do. I think they're sick and tired of Democrats and Republicans fighting and feuding and holding pieces of legislation hostage because they didn't get what they wanted or something or someone might mm -hmm. get credit for something. Why don't we start doing something for our country? Why don't we just say, this is good for right. America? I've always said the best politics is good government. Do something good, Chuck. But I, I'm not going to predict what's going to happen. I'm not asking you to I predict. I just want to make sure we do something good. And this is What result do you <laughs> want? Do you want the Democrats to keep control of the United States Senate and the House of Representatives? Oh, I love... Uh, you know, I'm not making those choices or de decisions on that. I'm going to work with whatever I have. I've always said that. I think the Democrats have great candidates that are running. They're good people I've worked with. And I have a tremendous amount of respect and friendship with my Republican colleagues. So I can work on either side very easily. So you don't care so about the outcome? Have a problem you don't care about the, voters... the outcome this year of the election? Well, whatever, whatever, the voters, whatever the voters choose, I can't decide what's going to happen in Kansas or California or yeah. Texas. I really can't. I've always taken, taken the approach, whoever you send me, that's your representative, and I respect them. And I respect the state for the people they send, and I give it my best to work with them to do the best for my country. I don't play the politics that way. I don't like it that way. I'm just, that's not who I am. There was a new third party uh, organized and announced just last week, uh, a centrist third party, Christine Todd Whitman, Andrew Yang, uh, David Jolly. Is that something that seemed appealing to you? Based on the answers you just gave me, I'm starting to wonder. <laughs> well... I'm starting to wonder when we're going to start worrying about our country more than we do about our political parties. That's what scares me. I think that we all have to come back to what our purpose of being in Washington for and who we're really working for. We're not working for any party. We're not working for any political idealism. We're working for basically right now a very challenging world that we're in. We've got what's going on in Europe right now, geopolitical unrest, and now we have threats from China to Taiwan and all this going on. And here we are bickering over... Uh, political outcomes and who's going to be in charge of what uh, right now. Let's take care of the American people are hurting. Right. Inflation, Chuck, is killing them. It is killing them. Okay? Senator yeah, so Senator Joe Manchin there, let me know your thoughts here. You know, he, he's right. You know, Congress can't seem to get along here on anything. All the Republicans will vote no on this bill. Um, and uh, we, we've seen this a lot here recently, and you can – you can kind of hear it in, in Joe's voice there. He, he knows that Congress has not been able to get along here on anything. In fact, look at the, the statement here just given here by Ohio Representative uh, Jim Jordan here, actually. He's actually a famous wrestler. He was a, he was a four-time state champ. He was, a, I think he was a national champion in, in college. Uh, look, look at the statement he just gave here. Check, this is this is the sediment. Uh, in Congress, especially coming from Republicans, because this is just the, the sediment in Congress right now. This has been going on here for a while. And listen, look at what he says here. Yeah, GOP Republican Representative Jim Jordan says it's wrong for any Senate Republicans to work with Democrats on any bills endorsed by Biden. So basically, he's saying it's wrong for Republicans to work with any bills endorsed by the Democrats. He's, so he's basically saying any bills, the Republicans shouldn't work with Democrats on any bills at all, is basically what he's saying. Because if it's endorsed by Biden, the president, a Democrat, Republicans shouldn't vote on any bills that the president wants to pass. This is the sentiment right now from a lot of Republicans. And this is why we're seeing a lot of bills 
uh, all voted no from Republicans, and very few bipartisan bills get passed. Very, very few. Yeah. This is, this is really the, a, a major problem in Congress right now. A major problem. Yeah, so let me know your thoughts here uh, in the comments, and we're we're seeing uh, the people, uh, the um, Americans, um, are the ones being hurt here, uh, in in so many different ways. Inflation, um, and uh, you know we have this the veterans bill, the the burn pits bill, uh, just the latest at the center of attention here right now. <sighs> yeah, so. Uh, thankfully, we have a lot of states sending out uh, inflation relief checks, stimulus checks, and uh, in fact, one of them going out here today. Check this out. Yeah, you can see this headline here, Run to the Bank. One state is handing out stimulus checks tomorrow. Uh, this headline came out here uh, yesterday, so it's actually going out here today. Uh, but we have more and more states that are sending out stimulus checks, inflation relief checks, property tax rebate checks, renter checks, all sorts of different checks here um, going out to help their residents here. Uh, and one of them is going out here today. Here's the details. Yeah, New Mexico residents will receive stimulus checks starting from August 1st. State officials last week confirmed that New Mexico taxpayers will begin receiving tax rebate stimulus checks Starting August 1st, the stimulus checks, which are distributed as traditional checks and direct bank transfers, aka, you know, deposited into your bank accounts, are part of the statewide tax rebate scheme designed to provide relief from skyrocketing inflation. Uh, we have a, about 20 or maybe a little bit more than that at this point. Uh, different states that have done this or are in the process of doing this. So almost half of the states at this point here uh, are doing this. I'll keep you up to date here. I'm going to do a big video here coming up here. 1.1 million New Mexicans, over a million people, are el eligible to receive as much as $1,500 in stimulus check tax rebates under the basically stimulus checks, up to $1,500, which Democratic Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham pitched as a way to help residents cope with the rising cost of food and household items, $1,500 or as much as $1,500. That's a lot. Yeah, this summer we'll be returning hundreds of millions of dollars in relief to families around New Mexico helping them cope with the rising prices of gas, groceries, and other household expenses. Under this uh, stimulus check, residents will be entitled to a refundable income tax rebate of $500 if they're married and filing jointly and uh, have returns under $150,000. These have gone out in multiple different payments. Uh, I think it's the $500 that are going out now. But these have kind of gone out here in several different kind of rounds here. Yeah, according to the state website, an additional refundable income tax rebate for all taxpayers worth $500 will be made available for single filers and $1,000 for joint filers. Relief payments for New Mexicans who do not file income tax returns of $1,000 for households of married couples or single individuals with one or more dependents and $500 for households of single individuals without dependents are available as well. So if you're a non-filer, the state of New Mexico has it as well. They have a, a fund available for non-filers. I think you have to go to their website and apply. So keep that in mind. Yeah, and a lot of this money is coming from either the last stimulus package from last year, $350 billion went out to all the states uh, divided up based on population, or states um, are running the surplus right now because of the historic unemployment. It's weird. This recession that we're in is based on really high inflation, but it's it's a, it's a not a normal um, recession because normally with 
recessions, you have high unemployment. Um, but right now we have low unemployment. So it's really, it's really a, it's an anomaly of a recession. So um, states are bringing in a lot of tax dollars, and so is the federal governments as well. And interest rates are going up during this recession when normally the Fed would lower interest rates during a recession to try to help boost the economy. But in this case, they're, they're raising interest rates because they're trying to bring down inflation. So it's a really weird, uh, not a typical recession. So I'll keep you up to date with how the, all this is going to work. And uh, with new stimulus check details, we're seeing a lot of it on the state level this time around. Uh, and I'll keep you up to date on any new federal um, type of stimulus news that might come out here. And this new Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 information here as well uh, with Sen Senator Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin and Republicans and Democrats. There, yeah, there's a lot of it going on here. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below and click the bell icon so you get notifications. When we go live, it's completely free to do so. And I will keep you up to date here with everything going on here on a daily basis. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And you can click here to see what Nancy Pelosi just did, which was also some crazy news. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.